When this wonderful opportunity arose, I thought it would be a nice idea to learn more about the pioneering first ladies of traditional flute. And do you think is she where she was kind of one of the first women or the first women we have recorded? I don't know if it was one way of telling us, you see no one anywhere we went at the Flez, no women playing it. Yeah. So that would give you an inclination that they weren't there. It was kind of unusual because there wasn't many girls around playing flute at the time. Yeah. But, um, sure. And did you take much notice of that or what, you know? Absolutely about no <laughs> notice at all of, of any of this. And it's only when you're recollecting going back yeah. that you realise, you know, trust was something very different and it was something special. Well, he brought us two flutes and mine was a fiver. I think Nick is the same. <laughs> I guess I always felt it was quite normal to be a woman flute player in the tradition um, because I fell into the fife and drum in Dingle when I was very young, um, went on to the flute and I was always surrounded by other women. And I also heard um, some of the older generation of flute players just talking about, you know, maybe the first woman flute player they, they had come across was Peg McGrath. Um, and I was aware of Anne McAuliffe and Kerry and some others. So I guess I just started <laughs> looking at it a little bit more and uh, wondering about it a little bit more. And by chance I had a conversation with the wonderful Seamus Connolly uh, and I was telling him or I was talking to him about the flute playing and he said, I bet you never heard of Teresa Gardner. And um, he told me she was from Galway. And when I got home, I went to the archive and started looking for her. And I did a little program with um, Aoife McCormick on the Rolling Wave in October last year about the women flute players and we played a track from Teresa and others and the following day I was contacted by the Gardner family uh, with photos of Teresa and filling me in that Teresa is alive and well in County Meath. So I'm really looking forward to meeting Peter Gardner, Teresa's brother, who's still in the home place and it's uh, in Kilcreast. <laughs> I'm now meeting Peter Gardner, Teresa's brother, at his home near Kilcreast in County Galway, a house that was host to much music over the decades. Peter is a mighty box player and he's going to share some stories with us, as well as some previously unheard recordings of Teresa, which I can't wait to hear. Peter, you're very welcome, Aoife. And this welcome. is the house you grew up in. That's right. That's right. This is where we grew up. Yeah, and maybe you might tell me a little bit about just growing up here and getting into music and yes, parents and yes. everything. Well, when we were young, well, before starters, my father and mother used to play the melodians, and yeah. uh, we seemed to take on to that. We listened to them, the old people, a long, long time ago, and uh, we seemed to be a musical family from the word go. We just liked the music. Tell me about Teresa then. So Teresa yeah. is your is your younger sister. Teresa is my youngest. By much. Teresa is the youngest. Uh, well, just nearly two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she started flute. Correct. Yeah. And she took on to the flute. So she was cool. He used to be uh, in Peter's well. They used to go up there to a little bend in Peter's well there, and anyone could join in. Okay. And uh, 
three so used to go up to me, there stood right up there and James and all them being there, John Maloney, there was a Josie Cooney, there was Joe Cooley be just about going gone to America at that stage. But Theresa anyhow said go on and she was asked to play with the Kilimer Kelly band then and the Leeds and Kelly band the other time there as well. So Joe Burke's band and uh, but um, it was pretty demand like for them she was to play a good bit. Yeah. But then she was asked to do the Kelly house when Maliki Sweeney's came to Laban Hall. That's when someone asked her to play a tune. She was sixteen years of age at the time. Okay. And someone sent up a request, would she play a tune? So the Maliki Sweeney's crowd didn't know who she was or who she wasn't. She happened at the concert floor at her and she played the tune and she got great, great reception. And uh, got right after they asked her would she do a broadcast with them. Live, that was live that time in Kelly House. It wasn't pre-recorded at all. It was all as it happened. And uh, she, 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 she done it and uh, it was great, you know. And where was that live? That would be about 1956-7. Okay. So she had to go by bus from here, transport, there was very little at that time. And go to our mayor city first was her aunt, went with her. And uh, from there to, with the band up to Dublin then to broadcast. Wow. And it t- was live, there was no... That was a huge t- t- thing. It was a, t- a big one, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, it was nice, yeah. So about four would that be forty years ago yeah, or thirty? Yeah, thirty five, forty, yeah. roughly in a way. Lovely playing. Like it was as I say it was just off the cuff and it was, it, yeah. it just that's what we did. Yeah. So, and was it unusual for you? Well to I'd safely say she was one of the first to play the concert floor. No one ever heard anyone much uh, lady girls playing flutes. She was the only one really yeah. that we know of. And was she, did she mind that or...? No, yeah. she did not. Were you telling me a story about bringing Teresa to a monster fly or...? Oh yes, oh yes, that was the one, a monster fly in Ennis. Yeah. So Seamus Cooley, Peter's well, Joe's brother, he said, you'll have to enter this one, he said. You're going to the senior flute. He, he was a big believer she, in Seamus, her. Seamus, he was, yeah. so, so she was hardly known in Ennis, I'd say. Mm. Well, she was only 17 or whatever she was that time. And, and she said, lo and behold, she won the bloody thing above and there was, oh, that was mighty. What's gone? Who? Who is she? Where's yeah. she come out of? All the locals, you know, so they were all, it was a wonder job. And I'm almost certain it was Willie Clancy that was a Judy Oh, yes. Yeah. And Willie said, if you want to hear, you go up to the, the, the prize winners concert now, lads, she said, in the Queen's Hotel in Innes and listen to a plane. And that's what someone said about uh, how good she was, and you know this, and, and that's what you do, and, and they did. But I was very surprised when I learned that she was young. I, I assumed she was much older, older playing, yeah. it was such mature yeah, playing. Oh, she was very young and uh, she, was peak, she was peaking around 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. She, was, she was well able to handle it, you know, so. yeah. And do you think, is she where she was kind of one of the first women or the first women we have recorded? I don't know about that. She never would say, right, she said anything about it, it anyway. Yeah. But I, there, was, there was one way of telling us, you see, no one anywhere we went at the Flaz, no women playing it. Yeah. So that would give you an inclination. Yeah. They weren't there, yeah. Do you know? So, like, when you go back to the 50s, it's a long time back, do you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so, at Flag Hills, we would not see them. Mm-hmm. She'd be the only one. So, so I'd say, I'd love to know, but I, yeah. she had to be one of the first, I'd say. Oh, to, go, to go out public, anyhow. Yeah. They might be sneaking at home, don't they? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What a lovely experience meeting Peter and the Gardner family. Those recordings are so special and really show what a great flute player Teresa was. I hope to get the chance to meet Teresa herself sometime in the near future.
Well, you see, you're going well, ain't you? She's in cheap laces and cheap huh? Deirdre Collis is a flute player and multi-instrumentalist from Clooney in County Sligo. She won the Senior Flute All-Ireland in 1975, the first woman to do so, and toured and recorded a lot through the 1970s and later with Coltus Kjoltori Erin. Deirdre has kindly invited me to her home in Ballina today for a chat. Thanks so and Deirdre for allowing us into your lovely home and for chatting us chatting to us today. It's great well, it's, to finally meet you it's properly. It's lovely to meet in person now yeah. and you're very welcome. Maybe you might just tell me a little bit about your upbringing in Sligo and getting into music and how that kind of all came about um, for you. I was born in Cluny in County Sligo and probably from a very early age I started playing um, the tin whistle. My dad was big into music oh. in Sligo at the time. He played concert flute and his father before him played concert flute. I remember Right. hearing my granddad as well play a concert flute. So I was playing tin whistle probably from the age of maybe four or so and um, always got great encouragement at home and there was always lively music to be yeah. had. Probably I was maybe 11 or 12 when I started playing the concert flute. Okay. And natural progression from the whistle and that. Mm -hmm. So dad would have shown me the technique and the fingering of that and um, I found it, a bit, it, it, it takes a while to get used to playing the flute, Yeah. but um, I loved it. I think people don't realise how physical and how difficult the flute can be. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm... I, I would find the same because I don't play very much and then when I do take it up to play a few tunes I'm puffing and panting <laughs> and... Um, but it is a lovely instrument. Yeah. A lovely instrument. And of course, I, well, I suppose I was always jealous in Dingle of all the flute players around Sligo, Leitrim, Common, and the strong tradition of flute playing. So, like, you were from a family because where flute was very prominent. It was very prominent, yeah. yeah. And um, of course, then there was loads of other flute players around the area. Yeah. And um, Josie Beckdermott, a great flute player and a great composer of tunes and music. But um, my sisters then, they were both playing flute as well. And okay. my friend who lived next door to us at home in Cluny, Marion Egan, yeah. she played flute. And it was kind of unusual because there wasn't many girls around playing flute at the time. Yeah. But, um, sure. And did you take much notice of that? or what, you know, Absolutely no <laughs> notice at all of, of any of this. And it's only when you're recollecting going back yeah. that you realise, you know, Trust was something very different and it was something special but when you're young you don't you don't take, you don't take any heed yeah. to those sorts of things at all. And you uh, won the All-Ireland on the whistle, the flute and the accordion? Yeah. Uh, what year was that? Um, I won the whistle in 1972. Yeah. I had to do all this research now because yeah. I couldn't remember. Uh, I won the flute then in 75 yeah. and the accordion in 76. invited on the Colthus tour. I couldn't believe it when I was invited to go on the 1973 tour, which was the second tour out of Ireland. Wow. So it was to America. I'm not sure if we went to Canada that year, but um, some of the people that I would always have admired were mm. on those tours. Were you aware or did you think about, do you know, like there were women on all those tours anyway, do you know yeah, what you were yeah, alongside? there were women them? dancers and singers and yeah. musicians, yeah. And it wasn't unusual or was, did it feel unusual as a woman no, to go on a didn't. tour? There was no, something. no, it didn't. Thank you. 
And you were on tour with Peg McGrath as well? I was on tour with Peg, yeah. It was, I think, the 1973 tour. Okay. One or other of the many. Yeah. Peg was lovely as well. Yeah. And we had a great French. We used to often meet for sessions afterwards then. Really? Because Peg was only from Boyle, which course, is only yeah. up the road from Colooney. Yeah. So we often would meet for sessions and lovely. We used to great time. Lovely, lovely times and lovely memories. Yeah, and it's about. lovely to see your name as the All Ireland Champion in '75, and Peg was the following year. Peg so was the, the two of you year. were the yeah, yeah. two hot shots, obviously, yeah. at the time. There wasn't, a, <laughs> there just wasn't many people they influenced at the time. <laughs> It was lovely to finally meet Deirdre and hear about her musical memories and journey. It was also lovely to hear her speak so fondly of Peg McGrath. Peg McGrath was a wonderful flute player from County Roscommon. Born in 1948, Peg learned from the great Josie McDermott. She won the All-Ireland Senior Flute title in 1976 and often toured with Colts Cultie Erin during that time. Catherine McAvoy mentioned seeing Peg alongside Josie on a Coltis tour when she was younger and that Peg was the first woman that she had actually seen playing flute. Peg McGrath was a prominent figure in the fluting scene nationally, appeared on many TV and radio broadcasts and was hugely influential to other flute players. She recorded on the first all-female album entitled Cherish the Ladies alongside Kathleen Smith and Mary Mulholland in 1981 and was a founding member of the renowned Thawne Cayley Band. Peg McGrath passed away before her time in 1995 in a tragic accident. We are so lucky to have her recordings, her flute playing still inspiring today. I have come back to County Kerry to chat to Anne Sheehy McAuliffe. I was accustomed to seeing Anne playing flute from when I was young. I often saw her perform with the group Narithery as well as the Bruss and the Band. Anne and her husband Nicky are stalwarts of the music scene and wonderful teachers. I'm delighted to be here in Castle Island to talk to Anne today. Thanks a million for having us Anne. You're more than welcome. <laughs> it's lovely to see you in person. Um, you might just to start off tell me a little bit about, I mean we're in near Castle Island now today but you didn't grow up here. No, I grew up in uh, the parish of Lixna, a place called Glino. It was on the main road between Tralee and Listowel. And um, the first, well, my father played the fiddle, so we always had music in the house. And um, when I went to school, our teacher, I suppose, like everyone's story, we started off with two whistles. Okay. And tell me then the flute. How did you? How did the flute come the about? Flute then, um, there was we had a, a scurryic group, mm -hmm. and there was a man from Ballybunnen called Liam Lynch, and he was brought in to join us with the flute. There were no flutes in Lixna at all. Like okay. nobody played the flute. A few tin whistles, all right, but Liam had the flute, and um, I used to be trying it out. Okay. So I said, God, I'd like to be able to play that. So it was much later on, a good few years later, I said that I actually got a flute. Okay. Um, at that stage then, um, the Desmond Kelly Band was being started. Okay. And I was, um, that would be more centred around Castle Island, like. Okay. So we were going to Flas and stuff at that stage, like. Yeah. And meeting up with other musicians, like. Nicky McCall for people like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, Dennis McMahon, I, you probably yes. knew Dennis played yeah. the fiddle. He was the man that had the idea for the, when the band was playing for Cayley's like mm -hmm. and everything. But he, Dennis said it would be nice if we played in competitions. Okay. So for that, you needed flutes. He decided that Nicky and myself, mm -hmm. because we played the whistle, that we should play the flutes. So he was in England working for the winter at the time and he brought us two flutes. Okay. That was the only way you'd get a flute in those times yeah. and they were in markets in right. England. 
Yeah. So he brought us two flutes and mine was a fiver. I think Nick is the same. <laughs> Well, yeah. we'd be flies like and yeah. you know, playing music together. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, N nothing serious. serious. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself and Nikki, like in a lot of the bands you've played and you've been in them together as well. Oh yes, since that time, yes, which is lovely. Yes. Uh -huh. You don't fight at all, I say, do you? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the grab and kill then as well a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, that was a great yeah. surprise altogether. Oh god, it wasn't a surprise. Well, it wasn't oh, a surprise for everyone surprise. else. It was about time, <laughs> but it was a nice to get it. You oh, know, it was, like... of course, it was great. It was wonderful altogether, like completely unexpected. You're a natural on the camera, I don't know why you were nervous or, <laughs> <laughs> or dubious about doing it. <laughs> Was that a camera? <laughs> <laughs> but Gramila Mahaka fan. Fall to roll. mentioned to me that the first woman she saw playing flute was Peg Ryan from Moreau in County Limerick. Peg Ryan, knee Carberry, was born in 1923. Her mother played accordion and fiddle and Peg was always encouraged to play, publicly performing from the age of about 10. Peg taught traditional music in the Moreau Capamore area of East Limerick up until two years ago at the age of 96 and the local branch of Coltus is named in her honour. Many of you will be familiar with her composition The Kerry Polka. I hope to meet Peg in person in the near future. She sounds like a mighty woman. This has been such a lovely experience, meeting with Deirdre, Anne and the Gardner family, learning more about Teresa, Peg Ryan and Peg McGrath, hearing new recordings of all of these wonderful women. I'm indebted to the ITMA team, as well as everyone who's provided me with photos, recordings and information. As a flute player, I'm really, really grateful to these pioneering women for their music and inspiration. It's brilliant to see how far we've come. Manana Fadoiga Mura Abu. Yeah.